In 2010, as part of their 10th anniversary celebrations, Google awarded huge sums of money to five projects, small companies, startups and inventions that they thought could change the world. Those five included some names you might recognise. The most famous is Khan Academy, which was only a couple of years old then. But Google also gave $1 million to an invention intended to revolutionise public transit, the Schweeb. This is the prototype, set up as a racetrack, and it's still here in New Zealand. Schweeb is effectively a bicycle on a monorail. These have been specifically designed so that they can swing horizontally. We get up to speeds of about 60 kilometres an hour for someone that's doing really well. The original theme of this was to turn them into a transport system. The racetrack in our environment is certainly better because we're an adventure park. If it was just a setup where we would just cruise around the, the park, we don't think it would have had enough impact. The electric sides of them are off the shelf. Everything else is built by us here in Rotorua. The initial ones were built with Jeff Barnett, the inventor, when he first got the ride going. They then adapted that very quickly because there was a few things that didn't work. And then when there was change of management, we made electric pedal assists. There was the family market that were dying to do it, but they found it a bit too hard to get them going. 2017-18 is when the next generation, the third generation of pods came in. Sorry about that. There are some obvious drawbacks with the design. What the post in front pedals slowly? How do you overtake? Uh, you can't. The marketing copy for the Schweeb says that instead, you just make contact with the car in front and push it along to and build up a train of those pods moving along the track, all working together. How about up hills? What if you get tired or down hills if you need to brake? Or what if you're approaching a track switch and it's not locked into place yet? Well, the marketing says that in the final version, there'd be electric boosters available on uphills, which, to be fair, there are now in this version, and also brakes on each pod and a central control center somewhere to watch over traffic and safety, which adds such a ridiculous amount of complexity and points of failure. And their answer for what if you're wearing a skirt in this position was, don't. It has to swing. You would have too much tension and torsion on the pods if it stayed straight as you were going this way. So it is designed to swing and it's got dampness so that it takes up the swinging motion and slows it down. And it's one of the rides here at Velocity Valley that anybody can do from three years old right up to 90 years old. This is what transit nerds call a gadget bar, something that looks and sounds futuristic but is actually worse than a more down to earth option. Instead of this, cities could just build separated bike lanes they handle more people, reach further, cost far less, require very little maintenance, and allow overtaking. It's pretty obvious that the Schweeb was not the worldwide future of public transit, but somehow, out of 150,000 ideas, Google looked at this and said, yeah, spend a million dollars on more studies to see if it can get rolled out. And the prototype was already built at the time. A lot of the media back then were skeptical. They had lots of opportunities. Most people know about the Google campus. They also had the Olympics. They had BP Oil. They had these big ones lined up, but they just never came through. And so we actually bought the IP and everything off the original owners. We've already got a franchise started in Korea, so we're going to be working pretty hard to get more on the go. And more is a ride experience. We're still in that zone where to turn it into a transport system takes a lot of work. But yeah, it's definitely something that everybody asks us about. I will say though, this is fun. There is a kind of retro-futuristic kick in peddling your own monorail pod. I did try to reach out to the original inventor to comment because of course that's good practice for something like this, but I couldn't even find a way to contact him. Please don't try if you're watching this. I, just please don't. I guess he wants to be left in peace. Hopefully you can respect that as well. The truth is, I don't know how I'd feel if something that I'd invented, something that got a million dollars in funding, something that presumably I had faith in and worked on for years, ended up being a strange novelty ride for tourists. But I do know I'd be really annoyed if people kept asking me about it.